uh, Torgrim Melung Stama, welcome to the Theatre Cafe webinar series. Thank you. We're going to be talking about creating performances uh, and writing performances for young audiences. Mm -hmm. And I've invited you here because you are uh, not a playwright as such, but you're a storyteller. Yeah. Um, you tell oral stories. Correctly. Um, and I think that's, uh, I think your perspective uh, on that uh, will be interesting for, hopefully, uh, to playwrights and other theatre makers around. You've worked both for adults and for young audiences mm -hmm. at various ages. Uh, and you've worked both with uh, stu uh, fairy tales, myths, legends, but also with fact-based or documentary-based mm. stories. Mm. And I thought maybe we should start with the fact-based and documentary-based, which is a, a very much a trend, I think, at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, in the documentary theatre and stuff like that, yeah. Uh, could you tell me uh, about your experience with um, those kind of... Yeah, primarily you know? for younger audiences? Yeah, then? primarily yeah. for younger audiences. Yeah, well, <coughs> uh, you might say that the, uh, the main performance that I've worked with that has been targeting younger audiences or, or at least uh, like 15 plus, you might say, like mm -hmm. the uh, young, young adults, young teenagers. adults, yeah, yeah, teenagers from uh, 15, uh, 15 to uh, to uh, 19, that age bracket. That was a uh, documentary performance, which which actually you were involved in. <laughs> <laughs> I was. <laughs> is, I was. Is that, that's okay to say here, I guess. <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, it's a director. But uh, uh, and it's uh, Kriks for Telling in Norwegian, uh, Tales of War is the uh, kind of like a translation in English. And it's about, it's, it's with me as a performer and also Amir Mirzai as a performer. He's a, he's a refugee Iranian. And it's about his uh, living here in Norway. So it's about his experiences from the Iran-Iraq war and also from the revolution and, and escaping Iran as a political refugee. And uh, so uh, we worked a lot with uh, me and him, we're performers, but we were also in a way uh, like co-playwrights in a sense, in, in the fact that we worked about, and you, I mean, we, we, we all were the producer was, Maria Rusberg, and you were also part of the process. But um, um, there was a thing where you kind of like, with all the different levels, like writing and acting, and also a bit, the dramaturgy was a bit mixed between the different functions. So we worked on creating then a story, uh, or choosing a pathway or a, or a line throughout all these experiences and creating the story for primarily young adults. Uh, teenagers, young adults, and uh, that was a very fascinating uh, experience to go through, and actually also to to delve into another person's life in that way. Now uh, he had always told a lot of stories from his experiences uh, because I knew him from before, but now we wanted to uh, the the object of this particular play was to really delve into those stories that he didn't communicate so much, like for instance. Uh, his experiences during the heaviest fighting and some of the stories he would rather avoid because usually he had a comical he told, he told stories without a comical element to them or that he made comical somehow but lots of black humor you might say and uh, I remember then so that was in a, in a way quite like compared to a lot of things that I'm doing is very much based on actual myths and legends and where kind of like the the structure and the, the story in itself is already there, but here we had to really take a chaotic life with so many anecdotes, like there was, so, there was enough for several films, and then decide, okay, what is our story here? What is our line? So uh, uh, we started out with uh, being together on a cabin, the two of us, that was the beginning, at least when I was involved in the project, and I basically just sat down with my laptop and I started, I asked him, okay, um, tell me about this. And he started to tell him that ever I didn't understand anything as a, as a Western, I was thinking about myself as a Western audience member. So, because he has a lot of information when he talks, talk, talks about his story, he, there's a lot of things that's self-evident to him because it comes from his culture. So it was also part of my task and also, also yours and Maria's, but in that beginning, to, to find the, yeah, to, to kind of, find how, how to make this relatable to Western audience and how to, what, what information we have, have, have part of it, uh, take part of it. I remember sitting there asking questions every time I didn't know anything, and by the end I've been writing for like seven hours straight. <laughs> I never actually looked at the document again, but it has had, it was this, that was the first, you know, just total, okay, I have to understand this world you're coming from, like an alien planet in a way. And there were so many interesting and uh, funny and uh, surprising moments that came out of that or, 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 or like subject material and uh, 
So it was this back and forth with those things was quite interesting. How did you find uh, a kind of guiding principle to to find that story amongst all this this kind of myriad of, of little oh. anecdotes? Well, uh, we had chosen uh, there was some kind of um, like themes that we had chosen, or some kind of like uh, a way a way way to look at the viewpoints, you might say. Uh, for instance wanting to uh, illustrate or to to show or to give an impression like an inside impression of the reality of war and not uh, speculatively or glorifying and not uh, but not rather condemning but just trying to give an impression of, of, of the of that of being in the war as is as it is with the highs and the lows and things you might not expect that was part of the the thing but also uh, about the idea also when you've lost everything, like this is the story of a man who loses everything in a way, is there still hope uh, after the fact? We're also thinking about the fact that we also want to show uh, a story because there are so many refugees coming to to Norway and also other countries, but usually they don't tell their stories because they are they are too strong and they can't tell them. It's they 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 are too uh, too big and too emotionally overwhelming, uh, too traumatic. So in a way, by, by having one person tell his story, in a way, other stories can also be told somehow. Or uh, we all, so, so that was also kind of like a, a way to look into it. So uh, we wanted to include a lot of the funny stories that we always heard, but we really wanted to really show uh, the darker sides as well. So um, what we needed, to, we needed to find, we found early on uh, a character that we needed to kind of like have a character that would be, because there were so many friends that he had, there were so many characters, but we needed to think we have to focus on some particular characters. And then we chose uh, uh, Syed, which was like a very s strong friend of Amir. And then we focused on scenes where he was, he was there. And it turned out he was actually present in quite a lot of the big, uh, big cliffhanger moments. But we, so by choosing to focus on another, another, like a sidekick in a way with him, it was easier to make a structure through the story, like him, this, the, the journey of Amir and Syed. And when Syed actually dies, then it's also the end of an era somehow. So it was finding these, uh, these, these points or playing pieces or, or like symbols that we, that was possible, or kind of like to keep the focus in a way. And, uh, and cutting away all the stories that we really wanted to have, but which didn't really serve a purpose somehow. So, I mean, it was really like, also some stories we had to cut out, actually, not because they weren't factually true, but because they maybe were too, <laughs> they were, they, 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 we didn't think people would believe them. <laughs> <laughs> so, at, at least according to his subjective truth, they, they happened, but, uh, and we also believed them, but it's like, well, people don't believe this in this context, so we actually had to, had to tone some of it down, even, uh, at some, some points. So it was, uh, but it was a back and forth, and also the structure of the play changed all the time, especially when you work with memories, because this is the memory bank of this man, a lot of them repressed, and as we were working, things came up, things he had repressed for a long time. So suddenly, uh, and I think I, I've understood uh, like a situation in one way, and then I, it's, I've understood it's completely wrong, and I have to, we have to re rearrange the entire uh, like a scene, and we have to rewrite it, uh, or redo it. And then finally we discover that, uh, oh, uh, something else comes up uh, and then we find out that's a much better thing to use. And actually, I'm just a couple of days before the pre-premiere, something new appeared that had come uh, that we suddenly remembered. Uh, so it was a constant process and still, in a way, there's this a bit tweaking because things still, even though it happens uh, less and less now, it's like uh, two years, almost three years after the premiere, uh, there, are, there are small tweaks that come when you remember new things. Uh, so, it's uh, it's a very it's a very chaotic process, but it's very uh, very very interesting, and engaging, and I learned a lot about uh, <laughs> Middle Eastern or the Iranian culture in in the process. So it's, it's this feeling that the I, as the other part, and also the, the one responsible mainly to to make sure that the Western audience understands all the things that is necessary for them to understand and to explain those things that are that are maybe hard to 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 grasp. Uh, it was that I had to. I felt like I really had to know a lot. Uh, like, uh, like I'm showing the tip of the iceberg, and but to be able to to be very concise about what I'm telling, because I had a bit of like facts, 
like a fact uh, machine gun in some places that I really gave a lot of facts to to put in perspective. But I had to know like this the bottom ninety percent of the iceberg had to be there to be able to give give that. So it was a very uh, it was the most fact uh, based uh, performance in a way. Mm -hmm.